Massive news, everyone. A major upgrade will soon take place at Starbase to prepare for the new era of Starship. I'm excited to introduce the Gigabay. What will this new structure look like, and what role will it play? Let's dive in and discuss. Meanwhile, the launch pad is still being repaired in preparation for the next flights. Looking up into space, the ISS just completed its second space junk dodge maneuver in less than a week. There's a lot of exciting news today, so let's explore all of them in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It can be said that the past year and this year have been periods of significant upgrades for SpaceX's gateway to Mars. At the launch site, we've seen the appearance of the two towers, referring to the new launch tower. At the Massey test site, the systems are continuously expanding, with particular focus on the Flame Trench test system. However, it's the production site where the starships are built that has seen the most changes. Last year, older and smaller structures such as mid-bay, low-bay, and production tents were demolished and replaced by much larger facilities, including Mega Bay 2 and the world's leading rocket factory, Star Factory. But Starship will only continue to grow. And do you know which structure remains the smallest? Yep, it's the High Bay. Therefore, plans have emerged to replace High Bay with a much larger facility. Recently, multiple sources have confirmed this. Specifically, SpaceX posted a notice seeking engineers and workers to build a new facility, which they have clearly named Gigabay. The name seems to be inspired by Tesla's Gigafactory, a series of large manufacturing plants owned by the company, one of which is located in Texas. Musk's giants are gradually making their way to Texas, and the construction of Gigabay will be the next step in this ongoing expansion. Like Tesla's Gigafactory, Gigabay will be part of SpaceX's mass production line. But unlike Tesla, which focuses on cars, this will be the first time such a model is applied to a rocket system. In the announcement, SpaceX stated, Building on the rapid advancement of the Starship program, we are moving into a new phase of facility and infrastructure growth. As the Starship launch cadence ramps up, we are in need of multiple high-rise facilities to support new vehicle builds and reflight refurbishment across various sites. We are currently seeking structural engineers to serve as high-rise specialists, supporting the rapid development and build of Starship's next-generation vertical integration facilities. These facilities will ultimately enable the path to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The rest of the announcement mostly covered recruitment criteria, which we won't go into here. So what will this new facility be like? Given its name, we can assume Gigabay will be much larger than the previous structures, as Giga implies something bigger than Mega and High. Currently, High Bay stands at 81 meters tall and can hold up to three to four starships. Mega Bay 1 and Mega Bay 2 are both larger than High Bay in both height and area and can hold up to four to five boosters. Mega Bay 2 in particular also handles stacking and installing engines for starships. Therefore, Gigabay will need to be taller. In a presentation at Starbase in April, Musk noted that in Starship V2, the booster will reach 72.3 meters and the ship will be 52.1 meters tall. However, Gigabay is expected to have a long-term potential, so it must accommodate the dimensions of V3, with the booster height reaching 80.2 meters and the ship height at 69.8 meters. And don't forget that those are just prototype heights. SpaceX will also need to consider the height of the stands, extra space above the prototypes, and offices. So we can expect Gigabay's height to exceed 100 meters, likely somewhere between 100 to 110 meters, if not more. What do you think? Feel free to leave your predictions in the comments section down below. Along with the height, Gigabay's area will expand to accommodate more prototypes. As Starship's production speed accelerates in the coming years, especially with the presence of Star Factory, a larger assembly building will be necessary to keep up with the mass production demands. As SpaceX pointed out, the new bay will serve to stack stages and refurbish Starship components after launch, but it will handle both the booster and the ship. This makes it similar to Mega Bay 2, but on a larger scale. Some believe it could accommodate a full stack, but I think that will still be done at the launch pad. In terms of the timeline, Starship V2 prototypes will begin production intensively next year. I estimate that the Gigabay plan will kick off early in the year, starting with the demolition of High Bay and clearing the area. Construction should begin around the second quarter of the year. 
What do you think the timeline will look like? It's bittersweet to say goodbye to High Bay, which has played a significant role in the Starship program, especially in stacking boosters and ships before Mega Bay and Mega Bay 2 were built. But as SpaceX sets its sights on even greater goals, High Bay simply won't be able to meet the needs of the massive future of Starship. Still, don't be too sad, High Bay will be replaced with a truly remarkable structure. So get ready for the next massive upgrade at Starbase. Leave a comment saying from hi to giga to welcome this new chapter. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to keep following SpaceX's exciting development journey. I want to extend a huge thank you for your continued support, which has helped boost our subscriber to viewer ratio. Your support is crucial for the growth of the channel and ensures you won't miss any updates on SpaceX and the aerospace industry. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now and let's stay connected as SpaceX embarks on its next booming phase. Now that the tour of the production site has been covered, let's go ahead and shift our focus to the launch site. Currently, the post-flight 6 refurbishment of the launch pad is still underway, with the primary focus being the communications system atop the launch tower. This system encountered issues after the previous flight, but after several days of work, the system was upright again by last weekend. This indicates that the issues have been fixed, and I believe the system may have also undergone some upgrades to enhance its stability for future flights and ensure long-term reliability. Meanwhile, further down on the pad, the chopstick and ship quick disconnect systems are undergoing testing, followed by a series of operational checks. One notable upgrade involves the chopstick system, where two square panels resembling sensors have been added. These panels are attached to the inside of the left chopstick. Given their placement and design, I suspect these sensors are a significant upgrade intended to improve the success rate of the Super Heavy Booster catching attempt during Flight 7. In addition to these upgrades, work is also ongoing on the orbital launch mount system, and the scaffolding continues to be maintained. The OLM system has reportedly encountered no issues after the previous flight, which is a positive sign. The water deluge system, which helps mitigate the effects of launch vibrations and heat, has also been functioning well. SpaceX is working hard to meet the deadlines for the upcoming Flight 7, which is now scheduled for January of 2025. These tasks must be completed by the end of this month and early next month to ensure everything is ready for testing of the Flight 7 hardware. Testing could begin as soon as mid-December, ramping up preparations as the mission approaches its early January launch. Moving on to another important update, let's discuss the recent space junk avoidance maneuver carried out by the International Space Station. On the morning of November 25th, the Russian cargo spacecraft Progress 89 fired its thruster for three and a half minutes to help the ISS avoid a collision with debris in orbit. The maneuver took place at 4.49 a.m. Eastern and successfully lifted the station by about 500 meters. In its official update, NASA stated, The debris avoidance maneuver positioned the orbital outpost farther away from a satellite fragment nearing the station's flight path. This maneuver came just six days after a similar maneuver on November 19th. On that occasion, Progress 89 fired its thruster for five and a half minutes to dodge a piece of space debris believed to be a fragment of the defunct Defense Meteorological Satellite Program, which broke apart in 2015. Space junk avoidance maneuvers, once rare, have become more frequent, with the ISS executing two within the same week in November of 2023. This reflects the growing problem of space debris, which has increased alongside the rising number of satellites in orbit. Over 10,000 active satellites orbit Earth, with more than half being SpaceX's Starlink satellites. There are over 40,000 objects larger than 10 centimeters and around 130 million objects smaller than one millimeter, all posing risks to the ISS, which is aging and more vulnerable to collisions. As Russia plans to reduce its participation in the ISS program, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft could play a crucial role in maintaining the station's safety providing resupply and crew transport. Addressing space debris requires global cooperation, and while some solutions are being explored, a comprehensive strategy is urgently needed. SpaceX's Starship, with its immense capabilities, could play a key role in not only missions to the Moon and Mars, but also large-scale debris removal. As space activities grow, managing space junk will become even more critical, and the steps taken now could shape the future of space exploration. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.